hello everyone welcome to my youtube channel my name is evidence and in today's video i am going to show you how to do ordinal encoding so to begin i'm going to load a data frame and i've gotten the url that contains the data frame already and i'm just going to go ahead and import pandas as pd shift enter runs the cell you are currently in and create a new cell be below it so that's the key i'm hitting on my keyboard shift enter now let's go ahead and read our data frame and let's call this df and we want to read our url and let's go ahead and do df.head and just get a preview of the data frame so this is a preview of what our data frame looks like nothing fancy here at all but in today's video i am going to show you how to do ordinal encoding using education as an example so before we get started i want to show you the documentation of ordinal encoding and also tell you why you may use ordinal encoding so ordinal encoding is like what you use to turn categorical variables like education into integers when order matters Okay, so in this situation, we have education, right? Or uh, in this situation, we have coverage. I could, I could do this with coverage or education. But in this case, we are going with coverage. I think that's what I said. We use coverage. So use ordinal encoding. Encoding when order matters. If you go ahead and explore our coverage column a little bit, you will see what I mean. So if we do something like DF... And then let's do coverage dot describe. As you can see here, our coverage column has three unique values and 9,000 rows. And the top one is basic. And we can even do something like DF coverage. And let's do dot value counts. So right here, we can see that basic is about 5,000 rows, extended 2,000 and premium 8,000, about 800. So if you are going to encode these categories into numbers, I think it is safe to assume that premium is higher than extended and extended is higher than basic. So in this situation, order is going to matter. Okay. And so we could give basic the value of one, extended the value of two, and premium the value of three. And we could do the same thing with education. As you can see here, this is um, the different education levels. We have bachelor, we have college, we have high school or below. We have master or doctorate. So in this case, if you're going to encode education column, I think it would be safe to assume that doctorate is higher than master, master is higher than college, and college and bachelor could um, be referred to as the exact same thing. And then we have high school. So in this situation, order is going to matter in our category, so we we'll use ordinal encoding. When we are dealing with a situation where order doesn't matter or where we do not want to give a higher value to one category then we might use something like one hot encoding but in a different video i'll show you how to use one hot encoding but in this situation where we are doing where we are doing ordinal encoding we are implying that doctorate is higher than masters which is higher than bachelors so before I actually get to the code, let me quickly show you the documentation for ordinal encoding. So in this situation, I'm going to be using the category encoders ordinal encoder. And I might put this, this link in the description below. As you can see, these are the parameters. It's very straightforward. And um, this is the mapping. And this is the columns list. And then these are the different methods that you can use. And let's just go ahead and get started with the coding and all of this will make sense 
here. So let's go ahead and establish the dictionary we are going to use. Dictionary to use for ordinal encoding. I'll go ahead and call it um, dictionary. And let's put it into a dictionary. So the first thing I'm going to specify is a column that I want to encode. And the column that I want to encode is coverage. And then the second thing I want to specify is the mapping. Basically, how do I want to map the categories in this column? And in this situation, I'm just going to create a dictionary to identify the mapping. So for basic, I want it to be mapped to one. For extended, I want it to be mapped to two. And for premium, I want it to be mapped to three. So we have created a dictionary that we're going to be using for mapping our ordinal encoding. So this is the part where we use ordinal encoding to encode our column. So I'm going to get an import category encoders as CE. I think I may have to install it first. But let's see. Okay, so if you are in Google Colab, you have to make sure you install category encoders. Even if you're working on offline, make sure you, in you install category encoders first before you try to use it. So to install category encoders, you can just do PIP install category encoders or if you're using Anaconda, this is Anaconda code to install category encoders. So I'll just go ahead and copy this code here. Go back here and use this. So basically this exclamation mark basically says to do a shell command inside a notebook. I'll go ahead and run this. All right, so category encoders has been installed. Now let's go ahead and try to import it again. Yay, <laughs> we successfully imported category encoders. So whether you're working on Google Colab or, or, or offline in your own environment or Anaconda, make sure you install category encoders before you try to use it. So let's go ahead and instantiate our encoder. So this is instantiate encoder. And I'm just gonna call it encoder. It's equal to CE dot ordinal encoder. And in this situation, I'm just going to do calls, which is the column coverage, even though we've already specified the coverage when we did the mapping. So when you do the mapping here, you have to specify the cover and um, the column. And also it's good to specify the column here. And then we do mapping equal to dictionary. So in this situation, we are specifying what the mapping is. So we've instantiated our encoder. And then the next step is to do the fit and transform method. So basically we are going to fit this encoder through our data frame. And the transform method is like when you have a train and test data set. So to fully show you how to use the fit and transform method, I'm just going to go ahead and split our data into training and test data set. So let's do X train S test is equal to, we need to install something else from sklearn.model selection, import train test speed. And in a different video, I showed you how to split your data using train test split. And I'll show you all kind of different things. So go ahead and watch that video. I'll leave it in the description below. So since we have this now, let's go ahead and do train test split. 
and we want to split our data frame and we want our we just use the default everything else actually I'm gonna specify a random state so when you run this code later you'll be able to get the exact same result so now we have our training and our test data set let's go ahead and do this so if we go back to ordinary encoding here you can see the different method available you can do the fit method or you can do the fit transform method or you can do the transform method so basically you can do usually the process is you do the fit method first then you do the transform method but you can do fit transform in one line of code so instead of doing it separately you can do it you can do it with a single line of code and basically the fit method is basically saying I want you to fit the encoder to our data frame and the transform method is saying perform the changes that I've identified um, to this data frame. And the fit transform is basically saying first I want you to fit it, then I want you to change the categories using the dictionary specified. So I'm going to be using the fit transform method. So let's call it X train encoded. And let's do is equal to encoder dot fit transform. I want to fit transform our X train. And let's go ahead and execute this. And now we are going to do our transform method. So basically, this is what I was trying to show you before. This is what I was talking about. If you have a training data set and you have a test data set, the changes you made to your training data set, you want to do the exact same changes to your test data set. So to, do, to make sure the exact same changes occur in your training and test data set, right? After you do your fit transform method here, the next step that you do is you do the exact same thing on your test data set. But before I do that, let me go ahead and show you what we have so far. So if I do X train encoded dot head, as you can see here, our coverage column has been changed to two, one, two, three for the different categories. But if we do X test, as you can see, let's do a test dot head. As you can see, our coverage column in our, in our S test still has basic, basic extended, extended basic. So it still has the categories while our training data set has been transformed. So the changes that we did to the training data set want to do the exact same thing to our test data set, which is where, which is why we are going to do this. So we're going to do S test encoded is equals to S test dot now encoder dot transform. And we want to transform our S test. Now, if we do s test encoded dot head, as you can see, our coverage column has been transformed from categories to integers. And the reason why I did transform here instead of fit transform is because this encoder has already been fit to our training data set. And we want the transformation done in our training data set to be done to our test data set that's what we just did transform instead of face transform if we did face transform here then our encoder will be fit again to our s test and we don't want that we just want the transformation to be applied to our s test data frame so that's basically it and quickly we can just do something like um the original s train dot d types d types and then do the encoded x train dot d types as you can see right here coverage is an object which is a which means a string in python and in this situation 
coverage is an integer. So we've transformed our categorical variable into integers using ordinal encoding. And just to quickly recap what we did, we went ahead and imported our data. We got a preview of the data. We got a basic description about the column we are interested in, which is coverage. And then we saw, we explored another column called education. Then we created a dictionary for how we want to do our ordinal encoding. And remember, ordinal encoding is when order matters. Then we went ahead and installed category encoders. And then we imported category encoders. And we instantiated our category encoder using the coverage column and the dictionary we created above. We imported scikit-learn, we split our data. Then we fit transform our encoder to our training data. And then we transformed our S-test data according to what we did to our training data. That's basically it for this video. If you like it, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. If you didn't like this video, please give it a double, a double thumbs down. And you can find me online at evidencen.com. That's my primary website. Or you can go to evidencen.com slash blog. And also, you can visit me online at machinelearningeducation.com. This is where I keep all my data science resources. And if you go to machinelearningeducation.com slash free, I'll just click on this button right here. Once you're, you are machinelearningeducation.com, you'll be able to get access to my free data science resources. This notebook that I used today in this tutorial is going to be here at my free data science resources page. And here is where I put all my resources. So I make a lot of YouTube videos and I write a lot of blog posts and I end up with a lot of notebooks and resources and I just find it easier to put everything under one page. And also the videos on my YouTube channel, I also put them here and sometimes the videos appear in this group before it, it is published on YouTube. So go here, machinelearningeducation.com slash free to get access to this notebook and get access to other resources that I have. That's it for this video. Thank you for watching. I'll talk to you on the next one. Bye.